So before I actually get into this video of completing the square, I want to kind of back up and I should have explained in the last video what we are doing when we are completing the square. When we are completing the square, this is another way to solve a quadratic equation. Now in module two, lesson three, we went over three ways already. So we already know how to solve quadratic equations by factoring, by the quadratic formula, and by the square root property or method. This is a fourth way to solve a quadratic. Now, we're not going to be using this to solve quadratics. We're going to be using it in our conic sections, but essentially it says a fourth way to solve a quadratic equation. So for all of these, we're going to be solving. When we get to the conics, we're going to be using this technique to rewrite. But if we know how to solve quadratics, then we will be able to apply that when we need it in our, quad, in our um, conic section. So we have all of these steps here. Step one says, if the coefficient of x squared is one, go to step two. And for example two, all of our coefficients here uh, will be one. So we're starting with step two for example two. It says, isolate all variable terms on one side of the equation. So this is a little bit different than we've done before. This time, if I have my ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, um, I'm going to go ahead and put one for my a. So we want to get this in the form of x squared plus bx equals c. So I want my variable terms on one side of the equation, my constant, the one that doesn't have a variable, on the other side. Step three is to complete the square for the resulting binomial, which is this side here, by adding the square of half of the coefficient of b to both sides of the equation. So what that looks like is b over two squared. Step four, factor the resulting perfect square trinomial and write it as a square of a binomial. <clears throat> this will make more sense when we get into it, but this will be either x plus or minus, not both, but plus or minus, so let's not write it that way. Let's do x plus b over 2 squared. So that b over 2, before you square it here, goes right here, and then the square goes on the outside. And then use the square root property, which we went over last video, to solve for x. And those will honestly all be in this form that we did right here on part b. Okay, so let's do this. So part A is already in the right form where it's x squared plus bx plus c. So I'm gonna kind of rewrite this a little bit, and add some spacing in here. And so now we need to figure out what I am adding over here to the left side. So that's where this formula here comes into play. I have b, over two squared, my B is this 14. So I have 14 divided by two squared, which gives me seven squared, which will give me 49. So I'm adding in 49 right here. Now, solving equations 101 says what I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. And so that's why it says in here, we need to add this to both sides of the equation. So I am also going to add in 49 on that side. So now I need to factor this. What's that for? Factor. And it will always factor in this form here. So what do I mean by this? Well, look, if I needed to ask myself what multiplies, let me get another color, what multiplies to 49, but adds up to 14, that is seven and seven, which is what we got right here. So whatever that B over two portion is, that's what we're gonna be adding in right here. So this is X plus seven squared. If you expand that on a foil, you get to this, and that equals, 53. And so now we almost have an identical equation 
Now I'm right here. Now I can apply that square root property. The opposite of squaring would be to take the square root. So my square root and square cancel right there. And I am left with x plus 7 equals. I can't do anything with that. So that will just become plus or minus the square root of 53. That's a prime number. And then my last step would be to subtract this 7 over. So I get x equals negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 53. Okay, let's try again here on B. Okay, this one's not in the correct form. So I need to move this over. I want my X's on one side, my constant to the other. So leave some room when we rewrite this. We've got B squared plus or minus 10X plus leave some room and this equals negative one. So now let's apply this b over 2 squared to see what we're adding in here. So my b is negative 10. Negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. And negative 5 in parentheses squared is 25. And what I add to one side, I'm going to make sure I add over here to the other side. Okay, so factor this. What multiplies to 25 but adds up to a negative 10, and that's negative 5 times negative 5, which if you notice, let me use a different color here, this is the same as the number I got before I squared it. And that equals, that should be 24. I did my math in here before I wrote it. So we added 25. And then when I combined, I get to 24. And then now, opposite of squaring is to take the square root. So I get x minus 5 equals the plus or minus, and let's figure this out over here. The square root of 24 is 4 and 6, which is 2 and 2. There's my pair. Six can be broken down to two and three, but I don't have a pair of anything else, so it's just going to get multiplied back up to six. So this is two square root six, and then my last step is to add that five over to get x by itself. So x equals five plus or minus two square root six. Okay, pause the video and see if you can do part C on your own. Okay, I hope you had time to pause the video and try C on your own. So let's check your answers and do it together. First thing I need to do is move that 20 to the other side. So we have x squared plus 8x plus something equals 20. Let's figure out what goes in this blank, and that is my b over 2 squared. So b is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So I'm going to add that to not just one side, but both sides. This here factors to x plus 4 squared. And you can go about it two different ways. You can either ask yourself what multiplies to 16 and adds up to 8, and that's 4 and 4. Or this number here is always the number before you square it. When we add over here, we get 36. Now we will take the square root of both sides. We get x plus four equals, because my square root and square cancel. This is a perfect square, 
that gives me plus or minus six, and then subtract your four. So we have x equals negative four plus or minus six. Now, when we get a perfect square, I don't really wanna leave my answer this way here. What are those two numbers? So we have negative four plus six to give me one solution of x equals two. And then we get negative four minus six to give me another solution of negative 10. When you get whole numbers here, that means that this from the beginning was factorable, which would have been a little bit easier, but we still get the same answer no matter which method we use. Next video, we're going to have to incorporate step one because my coefficient of x squared will not be one. So if you do not understand example two and my coefficient is one, please rewind this and rewatch it before you move on to the next lesson.